So, the basic question is, when you turned 81, what did you decide to do with the rest of your life? Assume you were in great health. You had plenty of time. What to do in those years? The last time I was in my 80s, I apparently didn't take notes. So this time, I ended up realizing I had no plan. I didn't even realize I was old, which you recognized immediately when this image came up on your screen, until I realized I had disappeared from the planet. I no longer existed on Earth. I was in my mid-70s, and Hannah, my brilliant wife, and I were doing musicals and so on. We have a studio, and we've done television forever. And all of a sudden, all of the work came in, stopped. I was no longer able to earn any money. I went to an employment agency and got a couple little gigs, and then that stopped. And other than Hannah and cats that she adores and who adore her, there really wasn't anyone in my life when I stopped working or earning. So I'm not quite sure that's the same situation you faced when you turned 80 or 81 or whatever. I'll be 81 in about two weeks, 13 days actually. And no one in my family has ever lived to this age. so. Even if I'd had the brains to ask them, I didn't have the opportunity. And we have children. We have each of us three. We're two single parents, and we have an older son and two younger daughters, all of whom have children, most of them two. We have 11 grandchildren, eight granddaughters, and three grandsons. Thousands of miles, we, we chose to end up in America's heartland, right in the middle. So we actually live in the 19th century, if you listen to the natives. But in any case, um, I discovered that it's very difficult, at least for me, to imagine no longer being alive. It's hard to be 81 and have that not be part of your thinking. And I just can't grasp it emotionally. Intellectually, I understand. We all pass away. And I'm closer to it than when I was 20, probably, depending on driving skill and sobriety. But just imagining, here comes the sun, and people are running around doing what people do, and you're not part of that process at all. You're gone. So I, I, it, there's some odd things about being old and relatively invisible, but I'm not sure the invisibility its what's different when you're this age. I made a little list. And this is just the thoughts the way they came. There's no sequence. Very emotional. I don't believe I used to be emotional. I've always been in television production, and we were behind the cameras, never supposed to get emotionally involved in the programming. We were controlling engineering technology and artistic decisions. and So it was part of my craft to not be emotional. But at this age, if I'm watching television and here comes a patriotic song or a woman talking about raising children or something, I'm very emotional. I'm, I'm quite health conscious. Um, I didn't used to, I took my health for granted. At 81, you're not taking anything for granted. 
confused, of course. Um, memory is not trustworthy, especially names of people or descriptive details of things that may have taken place 60, 70 years ago. Uh, but I, I find I'm fairly thoughtful now. Why? I have time. What else? I'm a little lazy, and, and so I don't want to go out and do a whole lot of physical, even if that were an option, which generally it isn't. So you can read, but you can think you have nothing else going on in your silly head. I'm aware at this age how quickly time passes. I believe when I was a little child, it took forever. The summer lasted forever if you were waiting to get into the first grade in school or whatever it was. But now, pshaw, there goes a year. I, I'm aware that it's lonely. It's less lonely for Hannah. Hannah is a more friendly human, and she chats particularly with other women on the Internet, and she's been very active in this community with women's groups and all kinds of helping people projects. And I've been sitting around waiting for inspiration, apparently. Um... I think of my mother. My mother passed away when she was 79. I was in Los Angeles where I spent the better part of my adult years in television production. And she was in Helena, Montana, where I was born. She was a nurse. Died of a heart attack when she was 79. And, and the conversations we had were one-sided. It was me talking about my life instead of asking about hers. And I've really regretted that in these years. Now, it is also true that our children don't really ask about our lives in any detail, and our stock answer is, oh, there's nothing going on here. It's always the same. All the excitement is in your life. And all the challenges in their life, they're raising their children, and we've raised ours. Um... I happen to be healthier than I recall being in many, many years. I've abused my health, drank too much, smoked too much. Now, I quit smoking 30, 35 years ago, but boy, I really didn't breathe without a cigarette in my mouth for the 25, 30 years before that. And, and my father was an alcoholic, his father was an alcoholic, I was an alcoholic. Um, I drink a, a drink at 10 o'clock at night and take a sleeping pill, and that's the extent of my acute alcoholism these days. I love comfort food, and Hannah is a gourmet chef beyond description, so it's wonderful to live here with her. It would be awful without her. Um, the cats agree. Uh, it says here I'm very anti-male now and pro-woman, and that's true. The first 40 years of my life, I lived as a typical male. Um, I was all about income and success and whatever that is, what males do. And then my wife, second wife, and the mother of our three children decided she didn't want to be a mother and a wife anymore. This was in the beginning of a woman's movement that started in the late 60s and early 70s. So at the beginning of 1971, she took off to become a nightclub singer. And my son was five, and my daughters were one and two. And she had the nice new home on top of the mountain above Laguna Beach, and we had the old home halfway up a mountain in Sherman Oaks. And our home was empty. All the things were in her home. And all the money in her accounts and so on. And so for 12 years until the girls turned teenage, 
we all tried to raise one another. And the truth is, of course, they raised me as best they could. And when they hit teen years, we had to have a woman, and we found and kidnapped Hannah. And she had the same set, younger daughters and older son. So lots of kids. And then, I don't know, 20-odd years ago, we ran out of television production capabilities in L.A. and had the huge debt because I trusted a New Yorker. So we lost the home 29 years into the 30-year marriage and came to Branson, Missouri, heart of the heartland. So we put high tech in here for a few years. And now we're just in the 19th century. Uh, I'm very angry with all males now. I tried to learn how to not be a woman, but do the jobs life assigns to women, like raise little kids and make a home work. And, and trying to do that and also make a living, which was impossible, um, my partners took advantage of the emotional chaos of a wife who suddenly took off and stole the company I'd spent building for 13 years. So I had all kinds of midlife crises. But I started studying women and reading everything written by women and I continue to do that, and I'm only interested in talking to women if that's what this is the first program about. So I assume you're a woman. If you're male, go away. Um, males absolutely refuse to be held accountable or to hold themselves accountable for their actions or inactions. That just countless examples of that. You don't just have to look at politicians. You can look at everyone that's male. No accountability for actions or inactions. And women, of course, hold themselves accountable for meeting the needs of all forms of life and everyone, and, and it's the complete opposite of males. Okay. Uh, I'm also trying to get used to the fact that this might go on the internet, and apparently anything on the internet has to be shorter than 15 minutes. So on television, it is a half hour is the shortest we do, and we tend towards hours, some of us that are old. So what am I going to do? It says here, uh, I've had quite a few unusual life experiences. I worked fairly closely with some names you know, possibly. Jack Kennedy, Frank Sinatra, I, you know, who knows who you, who you know. I think you're a 50, 60 year old woman, your kids are grown, you've told what's his name to go away, and you're at that point in women's lives where you can do anything you want with yourself. You just have never been that free to explore you. You may have ended up on the top of your to-do list just by default. So, of course, I have a plan. Um, I, I think in these stories we'll try and explain males and women to you, a woman. Males and females will try and explain. And um, we're only going to talk to idealistic women. We have some real serious problems. And, We've tried everything that's failed, and so we have to try idealism next, I think. So for you and, and eight granddaughters, let's talk. Thank you. Bye for now.